It's a Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Sammy S. If Saitama punched Supersonic, would he just flat out die, or would he get sent halfway across the galaxy and live? It's a good question. Yeah? I'm going to assume that it's a friendly battle, because Sonic wouldn't be that antagonistic, and Saitama would understand that, so it would just be booting him across the galaxy. Okay. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> But, you know, Sonic dies anyway because he doesn't have enough rings to get back across half the galaxy. (laughs) Whatever's funnier. (laughs) (laughs) You said a few times Sonic doesn't have a house, but there were two instances in the games where the direct opposite was true. Those moments being Sonic Labyrinth and Sonic and the Secret Rings. On top of this, Sonic would need a place to store all his belongings, like his extreme gear, his shoes from various games, and more importantly, Chip's bracelet. I was just curious, where did you get the information that Sonic does not have a house slash place to stay from? Was it a note from Sega, or an internal decision, or maybe something else? Number one, Sonic Labyrinth isn't canon. Ha ha. And number two, who said it was Sonic's house in Secret Rings? Maybe he was bumming it at Amy's place, or Tails's. You know, who's to say it's his? Unless somebody says, here, stupid, the cutscene actually says it's his house. In which case, oopsies. But, uh... (laughs) No, it's it's an internal rule that Sonic is an eternal vagabond. He does not hang up his hat anywhere in particular, nor does he have the hat, so that's appropriate. But yeah, it is internal direction that he is always traveling, always on the move. <laughs> so when it comes to a question of where does his knickknackery get stored, I assume Tails takes care of it, just like he takes care of his planes and everything else. Sonic is homeless. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> he, Sonic he... is his own mobile home. There you go. <laughs> He's got to borrow his house from other people. Uh, yep, He is homeless. That's okay. That's how he likes it, apparently. Thanks to Morio Kishimoto-san's tweets and responses, we now know more playable characters is part of Sonic's future plans, or at least hinted at. That's something I personally am super excited about, since the characters were what made me a fan of Sonic in the first place. Aside from the three we're getting in Frontiers, what characters would you be most excited to play as in future games? Personally, I really want Cream and Cheese, Silver, Omega, and the Chaotix. Is this sort of a stealth way of trying to narrow down who the playable characters in Frontiers are going to be? The DLC? (laughs) (laughs) Clever, clever. Mm, I see what you did there. I'm tapping the side of my temple as like, oh, I know what you, I see what you're doing. What I can do here is just say, as a Sonic fan myself... I know what I would like to see because <laughs> I certainly wouldn't spoil anything and bite the hand that feeds and risk my future career. No, no, please don't do that. But no, um, I want to see everybody to some degree or another. Uh, yeah, I would like another crack at silver. I liked how he played in Sonic 06. I thought he was pretty fun and reliable to play as in part because you could take your time and you could, Watch out for when the physics objects lost their damn mind. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him getting another solo outing. Uh, I would also like to see another twist on a shadow game. I think, personally, and uh, Kishimoto-san, if you're listening, you know, <laughs> I'd, I think it would be great if he got, like, a rail platformer-like Sin and Punishment. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, have the Wispons in there for extra firepower, bonus hits, maybe the occasional side thing where, like, you tag in for Omega for a quick minigame of blowing everything up, and then you go back to Shadow, and it keeps the pace up, it keeps, you know, very tight-focused, arcadey, linear levels, maybe with a dividing path, so that is he, you know, fighting for the people, or is he just fighting for his own vendetta without getting too in the weeds with the branching paths? Yeah. And just keep it fun and fast and actiony and you find that perfect balance of all the things they tried with him over the years i think it could work myself yeah i think that would be a lot of fun i want to see blaze back i want to i'm greedy i want to see everybody back (laughs) for pity's sake put the rogues back into whatever racing game it doesn't even have to be riders style just get them back in a racing game at the very least get them into something let them like step off the boards once in a while like you know maybe unglue their shoes from the <laughs> thing I mean, 
they can use a variety of extreme gears and the other rider games i guess but it's always the same it's always they're always doing the same thing you know it's kind of silly uh being uh told that we need a chow garden game but which... well, yeah but that's that's a whole other chow garden could be its entire own franchise <laughs> i'm really surprised it's not it's another missed opportunity from sega wouldn't be the first time would not be the first time eggman's just cre- kidnapped cream's mom again after a full game of her trying to get her mom back, Cream cries, Sonic just barely missed him, then the music hits again, Sonic floats with the emerald spinning around him, and then bam, we get a raw shot of Super Sonic, and he blasts off into space as Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, and Cream regain their footing for Sonic Shockwave. Advance 2 has my absolute favorite Super Sonic transformation sequence. What's your favorite? Uh, that's a good one. That is a good one. That is pretty good, yeah. <sighs> I mean, as simple as it is, the very beginning of Doomsday Zone just goes metal from the very get-go. You're flung into space, boom, you're super hypersonic, you're flying through meteors, the music kicks in, you're like, okay, we're doing this now. Woo-ha! <laughs> it's like a, a completely unexpected turn of events. You're like, what? what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's just, it's like, you're going now, you are going full tilt, and ugh, it's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Sonic Adventure 2's transformation got me hyped. I will forever remember me and my younger brother had just gotten to that part of the game and you know, there's the chaos emerald. And it's like, okay, well we're clearly at the end of the game time for another supersonic fight. And he looks over and says shadow and shadow kind of nods and we're going, wait, what? And then they're side by side and they're concentrating. The emeralds are flying. We're like, wait, what? And then you got <laughs> supersonic and then super shadow. Oh my God. You can have a super shadow. Mine's blown. <laughs> And then, you know, the music kicks in and you're flying through space and there's lasers and meteors and I'm sensing a trend here. Mm. I think so. I think so. (laughs) Uh, It's very Dragon Ball Z-esque, though, I feel like. It's like, oh, yeah, I see where they're pulling this from. (laughs) And no no bias here, I promise. Uh Sure. But the first time you transform in Frontiers, and it's the complete opposite. It's very understated. You know, you grab the emerald, you transform, and then you just float down to confront this thing, and you smirk. No lasers, no meteors. It's almost a pastoral scene, but there's just this confidence, this knowledge of, oh, it's going to get real now. Yeah. The way that the music cues in and immediately starts to build. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. <laughs> There's this bit That's of silence beforehand, too, where it's like, okay, it's just, just a dramatic pause a little bit there. And then the music kicks in, and it's time to play. <laughs> and the yeah. other fights don't, you know, dwell on that. They, they, You've already established Super Sonic is freaking nuts in this. But that first one savors the moment. It's like, okay, you see him? You see what you're up against? You, you <laughs> Forget about you can climb that mountain. You can fight that thing. <laughs> and then you just go. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty, pretty, pretty badass. Not gonna lie. Good stuff there. I, I, I'm with you on that one. I can't think of any others like off the top of my head. Like, like I don't even remember. I does he go super in colors? Like, I, I guess. Nope. No. Okay. No, he doesn't. Okay. Um, it's kind of a post game thing. It's not a story. In the beat. DS version apparently he does, but mm, yeah, I don't know. Those seem to be like the most memorable ones to me, too. Hmm. Well, Ian and Kyle, you two are in the middle of a Bumblecast, and I don't know where Mr. Sega kicks the door open, says with full continent and says with full confidence, Big is a hardened gun soldier, refuses to elaborate and leaves. Discuss. Well, yeah, we knew this. To which I say, I uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> of course. I mean, he's the one who apprehended Sonic. He's in the chopper at the beginning of SA2. Yeah, and then he lost him. <laughs> he was on the ground supervising as the truck was going through yeah we knew big was a gun agent this entire time well yeah of course <laughs> this is my weapon this is my gun i use it for business i use it for fun <laughs> i mean yeah of course full metal froggy <laughs> <laughs> I love this smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. 
do you think is the most satisfying slash personal favorite thing you've written throughout your career as a writer? This could be an entire story, an issue, scene, or even a single line you think just nails the delivery. Personally, my favorite works from you is the Battle of Angel Island and Metal Virus arcs, especially the Cream and Gemeral versus Xena fight. That had to be the highlight for me. I am glad. Um, Good old limit right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one has endured. Yeah. I, I think that one speaks for itself. Uh-huh. Uh, the Michelangelo one shot I did for IDW is like the pinnacle. I feel like that's like at least in the top three. I still get goosebumps just going over. I don't care if I wrote this. This is good stuff. This hits on every level. I am damn proud of that book. <laughs> it doesn't hurt that the art is freaking phenomenal as well, but just it hit on every point that I wanted to from where hit the turtles book had been up to this point and it culminated and it actually had some impact on the series afterwards. And just mm, that, that's so satisfying. So I, I love it so much. Love that book. <laughs> uh, and the knuckles animation for frontiers. Yes. Yes. Now, God, that's so good. Large part of that goes to Tyson Hess's direction and the animation team and all of them. They brought it together to be sure. But you know, knowing that I helped craft that, that I put down like the blueprints mm -hmm. to hear my dialogue being read, just ah, oh, an ambush, huh? <laughs> Your funeral. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I will, I will still watch that and get misty eyed it's like oh, this is God. this is the knuckles i've wanted for like 20 years this is knuckles this is peak knuckles he's back baby i, <laughs> I helped make my boy get what he deserved and that's ah oh, i'm very happy about that man that was man that was such a good part of that whole lead up to frontiers too it's like oh yes knuckles <laughs> uh I'm so glad Knuckles is back just in terms of the movies and in the games and everything. Yes. Fantastic. Love it. Do you think the Eclipse Cannon at full power could destroy the Titans? With all seven Chaos Emeralds and a direct hit? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I mean, that would be comparable to Supersonic's power. Maybe. But would you? Uh, there, there's there's a lot of ifs though. But would you remember the Titans? <laughs> oh wait, no, that's a different thing. Never mind. Have you played Kirby in the Forgotten Land? And if you did, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, it's on my list. I liked, I liked how Kirby felt in 3D. I liked upgrading the powers, um, even if they became ludicrously broken. Uh, and you know, true to Kirby form. You know, here's the cutesy, fun stuff up to a point, and then all of a sudden, lore, <laughs> tidal wave of lore, and then the, typical Kirby, oh, <laughs> and then the horror element, and then the you know freaky, what am I even doing moment towards the end. But all the good, the production quality was immaculate as always, mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of Kirby games recently have really oscillated on how well they've utilized their new gimmick per game. Like, uh, was it, I think it was Return to Dreamland when you first had the, you know, super giant versions of powers, but they were hit a button and watch a cutscene in this particular part of the stage. Eh, not so much. But, you know, Planet Robobototo, Robobototo, Roboto, Robato, however many begins and O's are in that. Domo Arigato. The, yeah, the, the mechas felt like they were well thought out and well implemented. There were puzzles you could do with them. They just didn't feel like single goofy one shot segments. So with uh, Forgotten Lands, there were, you know, kind of gimmick transformations, but they felt like they were well utilized. They were part of the puzzles. They had uses outside of said puzzles. And aside from the very last transformation, you know, they all felt natural extensions of gameplay. And then the last one was just part of spectacle anyway. So that's forgivable. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah it's on my list i have not played it yet but i would like to 
What, in your opinion, is the stupidest line said by any character in a Sonic game? Something that either doesn't make sense in the story, or is just something that makes you cringe, that you just cringe at. If that's too hard, then what's a stupid line that made you laugh? It's like taking candy from a baby, which is something I would totally do. <laughs> which is fine by me. <laughs> ah, <it's> just... <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. It's terrible, but I love it. I, I was I was trying so hard to take the game at face value and that hit. And it's like, nope, we're done here. We Find have the computer room. <laughs> well, that that becomes obnoxious and then loops back around to funny again. I, I know, I know. It became a meme. <laughs> See you in hell, doctor. <laughs> God, that, that, game, that game is just full of stupid meme lines. <laughs> And it's a. This is probably a odd one to point out, but Espio's line read when he's damaged in Heroes. Yeah, because he's usually just very reserved, almost Batman esque, and then he gets it and it's my tail. It's like, is that is that Vector? <laughs> no, yeah. I was playing. What? What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get it. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. I don't know. There's some pretty silly ones in Heroes. Heroes seems to be kind of full of them. Like everybody calling Egg, the, the everybody calling Eggman's robots Eggman's robots no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all those Eggman's robots. Eggman's robots. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I still say those are the easy ones. <laughs> take this. Take this. Take this. It's the same line ha, read. Ha, ha. Same line read repeated over and over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get a load of this. <laughs> that one's just been repurposed into being hilarious, though. To be fair, uh, oh, Heroes is full of a bunch of good bad ones. Ah, I can't believe this. <laughs> ah, so good. Wow, my head's spooty. <laughs> Feeling dizzy. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're stupid, but I love them nonetheless. In case you've never seen it, there's a channel called Al the Boy, who not too long ago made a video breaking down and showing tons of leap motifs in the soundtracks of the entire Sonic series. For an example, the triumphant orchestra's theme that plays in the cutscene where Shadow is about to fight Mephiles at the end of his story in 06 is actually an orchestrated version of I Am All of Me, the main theme of his own game. There's loads more where that came from, and they always hit so hard. My question to you both is, what is your favorite leitmotif moment in Sonic? Also, side note, I recommend you check his video out because he points out a lot of cool leitmotifs that you most likely missed, and they're all really cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I love that stuff because yeah. it goes completely over my head. Yeah, I love I love the same kinds of things too. Obviously, I mean I'm a big fan of video game music and music in general. So yes, <laughs> like for every one I catch, there's like a, a dozen more that's like nope, didn't even notice. Yeah. So to that end, I I can't really point out the ones that I like because I've I'm dumb and I don't pick up on them. Uh, First time I caught Green Hill in Dreams of an Absolution, though. Yeah. Like, ah, that's clever. I like that. Yeah. It pretty much is just a glorified remix of Green Hill, to be fair. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a track from Sonic but, 1. But it's a it's a track from Sonic the Hedgehog and also a track from Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehog yes. So it makes sense. Um, dang it. I'm trying to think of the one. All right. Um, hmm. So you can do anything from Sonic CD. That was um, also used in a Game Gear game. This is more than a leap motif, I guess. But um, okay, yeah, it's in the Game Gear version of Sonic Two hmm. as the theme for Green Hills Zone. So yeah, that's kind of an interesting, like, like it doubles back to being a regular zone theme in a later game or a game at around the same time. So very interesting how that worked out. And uh, Mirage Saloon Act One. Sonic and Tails. Doesn't it have a little sky chase in there somewhere? Uh, I think so. Um, Sonic Mania, actually, I just I remember this. Sonic Mania has a lot of endless mind references musically. Like, hmm. I think the title theme is like a glorified endless mine reference. <laughs> I think 
I think T Lobes just was like trying to troll people and make them realize, like, oh, okay, it's a bunch of a bunch of endless mine in there. Yeah. I mean, nice. T Lobes is just genius, so whatever he wants to do is fine by me. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I like that. Um, oh, never. Okay, never turn back's piano intro is the chorus from "I Am All of Me." Yeah, it took me a while to pick up on that one. That's a good huh. one. Yep. And then All Hail Shadow solo section um, by Crush 40 uh, uses I Am All of Me for the solo section. So, yeah, that's pretty cool right there. I like that. I like those callbacks, you know. Mm -hmm. There's been many, many times. I mean, obviously the invincibility music in Sonic 1 and 2 being calling back to the title theme and Sonic 2's credits basically being Sweet Dreams by Dreams Come True. Basically, kind of a that leap motif going out throughout the whole game. That was fun. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I'll have to check that video out because uh, there's a lot I'm sure I'm forgetting right now. So, when you have bad guys with lethal weapons and attacks, I always noticed it must be kind of hard to show how deadly they can really be since you can't exactly show tails getting impaled by Metal Sonic spike <laughs> hand spikes. When you have a robot on robot fight, like Metal Sonic in general, do you try to use that as an opportunity to show how dangerous these characters really can be? It's much safer to show Gemeral getting his insides ripped out than it is for an organic character, or else that age rating is going to climb up real fast. Oh, yeah. And you're absolutely right. You can get away with a lot more with robots. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, there, there's still some guidelines to just how visceral you can get. When you're demonstrating a machine, but yeah, when when the robots fight, the the kid gloves come off. Mm -hmm. As they should. It finally happened. Big, who normally has the patience of a Buddha, has become angry. No one knows what caused this god amongst men to grow angry, but some speculate a naive fool kicked his frog. How devastating is the aftermath? How many planets are destroyed until Big's anger is quelled? That's my secret, Kyle. I'm always, always angry. angry. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> and then he just turns to a giant froggy. <laughs> okay. Well, that's weird, but okay. I mean, depends on what's between him and the source of his wrath. Because whatever is in the way is just going to get pushed over. Buildings, mountains, hopes, dreams. <laughs> it's not really violent. It's just kind of like a force of nature, like watching a tidal wave roll over the sand and there's nothing left. <laughs> Move, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle the lone survivor don't make me do it man don't make me fight you move Kyle <laughs> Kyle move people still bring that up as... <laughs> people you have people... no idea how hard it was not to just bust a gut doing that bit <laughs> people loved that <laughs> that was so much fun <laughs> Uh, boy, if Gemerald came in contact with all seven Chaos Emeralds again, would he malfunction and lose control like last time, or did Tails fix that problem? I would imagine Tails fixed it. He might even have found the component that would allow that and take take it out. I don't know, honestly. Hmm. When I first read the line, Big Oof, I just thought it was kind of funny and kept reading. A few days later, I hop on Twitter and find out that people are angry, like usual, and are at war over a two-word phrase that sure could have been worded a bit better, but ultimately wasn't that big of a deal. I thought the line was good, since it showed Sonic isn't exactly lo losing sleep over Starline being killed. What are some other small things you and other writers didn't expect to become a huge deal, even though it really isn't? Ah, uh, hmm. <laughs> I think you try to avoid most of this kind of discourse, and I don't blame you. Yeah. I mean, there's a few of the obvious ones where, you know, a reaction was expected, but the volume of said reaction was not anticipated. And yeah. that's not necessarily wrong. It's just kind of surprising. Um, oh, the Hy Hydro City and versus Hydro City one. Oh, yeah. God. That's, Calm that's down, guys. I mean, we all know it's Hydro City, so. Exactly. Um. I'm trying to think of, like, fun little innocuous ones, like Big Oof. <laughs> Big Oof is the biggest one. It's the biggest oof of all. <laughs> the biggest oof was the reaction to Big Oof. <laughs> I mean, I guess there was that time when, you know, a cover debuted showing Sonic drowning in oil, 
and it just happened to come out when there was a massive oil spill. There was some clutching of pearls over that, and it's like, guys, this was done months in advance. It's just poor coincidence. It's not a environmental statement. It's just it happened to be that way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, kind of silly. Uh, honestly, this is before your time and everything, but the slap. Yeah, see, I didn't want to bring that up. Specifically. I know you didn't want to, but I'm like, it's the only thing I can think of right now. The slap is such a big one. I mean, especially because the follow up after that is like, yeah, ultimately it just, ultimately they both bury the hatchet and move on. But it seems like people just can't move on. Yeah, and twenty years was... later. It was intended to shock and unsettle and, you know, disrupt the status quo. <laughs> and boy, how did it do? But it was never properly followed up on. And then it was resolved and moved on from. So any lingering resentment and anger over it is just being mad for the sake of being mad. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been made out to be way more of a big deal than it's needed to be. Than it ever should have been, honestly. Ugh. All right, we got one last one. There's been conversations about how people feel you lean in too much on references and callbacks, using a lot of Frontiers writing as proof of that. Personally, I think a lot of the examples people bring up aren't exactly fair, since a lot of them were just flavor text Sonic said while running around on the overworld. But some lines felt a bit much, like the line Sonic says to Amy about the tarot card readings. But for the most part, and I and plenty of others adored all the references you crammed in, but is this something you want to address at all in future games you could be writing for? Pretending you are, anyways. I felt that the references were all needed for Frontiers, since before this game came out, it felt like a lot of the games were disjointed. So connecting them all together was really satisfying. Yeah, I think Frontiers, my objective was, one of my objectives was to make it clear that this was part of a greater universe, a, a greater narrative to validate the sonic material that had come before and really make this feel like the next installment in an ever growing epic for sonic and the references are aggressive to be sure but i felt that in general they weren't excessively overt there's a few that i have seen people flag as like i oh, didn't need to go there it's like well what other comparison would it be case in point uh, Tails makes a reference to one of the Ancients' weapons being on par with, like, Dark Gaia. Or, yeah. rather, it was a, there was an extinction-level event on par with Dark Gaia. Now, I could have been more vague. You know, it's could have been an extinction-level event. Or, you know, a, a hugely devastating event on a global scale. And that would be accurate. But within the context of what Sonic and Tails have specifically experienced, that makes sense between the two of them. It's part of exploring the world itself. And if you don't get the reference, well, you at least through context know that it's a big deal. And there's at least two Sonic Wikis out there. Five seconds, you can get the context. So I feel like it's all right. I mean, some of the on the run lines maybe were a bit on the nose, but I also wrote them under a different pretext. So I'm, that's not me passing the buck. That's just the nature of the development and something to keep in mind, you know, if there is a future opportunity, um, if there is another game down the line and I do get to participate, please, 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 please. <laughs> I still want it to continue to feel like it's part of the greater narrative, but we don't necessarily have to go as heavy on the references. Maybe it depends. I mean, one of the things with frontiers storyline is that, by itself, it isn't really connected to Sonic. There were ancient aliens. There's an ancient space beastie that killed said aliens and is coming back. And these robots were built by these aliens that otherwise have no connection to Sonic. Where Where is the connective tissue? Why is this a Sonic game? And that's why I went heavy on the references to say, look, this is part of the world. This is why it fits. This is how it fits. And just trying to connect the dots. Yeah, makes sense to me. All right, and that's all we got. Thank you to Sammy S. for sponsoring this episode. If you want a mini of your own, head, ro head over to patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Uh, let's do it to it. See you next time. Uh,